The first written myth of this culture is Gilgamesh deforesting the plains and hillsides of Iraq. When people think of Iraq, is the first thing they normally think of cedar forests so thick that sunlight never touches the ground? That's how it was prior to the arrival of this culture. <laughs> So as a longtime grassroots environmental activist, and as a creature living in the thrashing endgame of civilization, I am intimately acquainted with the landscape of loss, and have grown accustomed to carrying the daily weight of despair. I've walked clear cuts that wrap around mountains and drop into valleys and climb ridges to fragment watershed after watershed, and I've sat silent near empty streams that two generations ago were lashed into whiteness by uncountable salmon coming home to spawn and die. Out here in BC and across North America, when they do industrial logging, they actually take and just remove all the trees. They, they level everything. They leave nothing but stumps and slash piles. And, uh, and they burn the slash piles and they take out all the timber. And what's left is a wasteland. It's like they take a rainforest and turn it into a desert. That's what a clear cut is. They use them for pulp, uh, they export them whole to the United States and to Japan. Um, there's not very much milling that happens anymore in BC, it's just getting exported for pulp and paper and fiberboard and plywood and whatever else. Not a lot of value added. Let's say we were sitting in the middle of a forest, chances are the original growth has been clear cut for lumber for development purposes and what you're seeing is second or even third generation growth that's occurred over the last 100, 150 years, depending on what part of the United States you happen to be in. There's still a strong push to harvest, harvest as much of the western red cedar as they can. They're bringing in huge helicopters to do that. And they're high grading, selecting the only only the really good high quality timber and leaving the rest laying there, you know, in a junk heap. So that's why we keep on, you know, fighting back. I think the last straw was when they wanted to log the Valley of Easter because of its historical and spiritual significance to our people. But they log it in spite, you know, just to make a point against our resistance, against our, our overall uh, position, you know, with regards to treaties or encroachments of um, industry development in our territories. It destroys the soil. In a lot of these areas, like this uh, clearing behind me up on the hill, you can see the soil is exposed. The uh, uh, ultraviolet kills off all the uh, the mosses, the funguses that hold the forest to, to hold the soil together. When the stumps rot and the roots die, then the, the then the slopes slide, and often there's not much regrowth. There's no regeneration of the forest. They do some replanting. Uh, it doesn't always work because there's no soil left. It washes down into the streams, it kills the salmon, it fills up the reservoirs, uh, it causes all kinds of flood damage downstream. 
Um, this is also a tremendous resource that you know the life on Earth has provided um, in order to make more life. I mean, the basis of life on Earth is soil. Without it, we would not be here. That's terrorism, stripping down on all the trees, ripping out the trees in the forest, and now they're going to rip out the, the guts of the land with them, looking for copper and gold. And there has to be some kind of focus to uh, address the injustice to our people, the injustice to the land, to the water, to the wildlife, the injustice to the marine life and the salmon life, and the injustice to the people that want to stand up for it. When we block the road, these trees are very valuable and uh, the laws are all profit driven, they're all driven by the corporations. The police are there to enforce the corporation's right to log, not to enforce our right to stop them and protect the ecosystem. There's so little that's left of the old growth forest like this that we see on the sides here that people are putting their bodies on the line. They are willing to make huge sacrifices to stop the forest from being sacrificed and the water and the air quality and the global climate. Now how many people are they going to drag away and put in jail so that they can continue to exploit the land for mega profits? Wildlife habitat is being destroyed, our, fi our rivers are being polluted, the salmon are disappearing. This is an atrocity! This is a violation of Aboriginal rights! I will not go to jail!